talk about some of the common use cases for each of these three storage types. For block storage, we're thinking more physical uh, or VM disks uh, used as boot volumes and additional local storage for servers. Uh, there's also shared volumes where you can uh, have one volume mounted as a write volume to one server and then multiple read-only uh, mounts on other servers. Think of uh, maybe some sort of data processor or a database where you have a single one writing and multiples of them reading that same data. It can be used as backups and has commonly been used as backups as well. Uh, so numerous high capacity and expensive disks can be aggregated to provide a backup target. And then fast local storage. So for things like SSD and NVMe, uh, it can be used for things like flash optimized databases, scratch disks, or media rendering. So some of the common use cases for file storage, uh, corporate file sharing uh, can be large scale file sharing for multiple users. Uh, and they can store all of their PDFs, Word docs, and things like that on there. Again, that's what I indicated earlier. If you have ever joined an organization and begin a workstation, you probably got connected to some corporate network share uh, where you can store all your files. Uh, it can be uh, used as a media storage and has been commonly used as a media storage. Uh, so you can store large amounts of medium like images, videos, etc., for easy access from the PCs or servers to process that data, and also some web content management. So it can be a shared location for managing web content to later be sent to the front end web servers to then serve out to the world. Some common use cases for object storage are uh, document and file share. So I say file share here because you, if you think about something like Box or Dropbox, that's more common as today's file storage than the traditional uh, Windows host, at least in my experience. Um, and so that can really be a good replacement uh, for that backed to something that's very efficient as well, like object storage. Uh, object storage can also serve on its own static websites. So basically you can build out all of the HTML as long as there's no database backend, and that can be fully hosted in object storage because it, it is hosted over HTTP access, just like a website would be. Uh, it can be used as a backup and tape replacement. This is a big one. We used to have a huge tape robot when I worked at Sirius XM, and it cost multiple millions of dollars a year uh, to buy more tapes and to maintain all of that and to store all the tapes in Iron Mountain. And people are trying to move away from that. And a good replacement for that is object storage. Because of the near infinite scalability, object storage is a modern replacement for traditional backup and archival methods. And then this is also a great target for data analytics, AI, and ML. Uh, leveraging the extensive metadata capabilities of object storage makes this ideal for massive scale data analytics. So if you have a, if you're training a machine model, if you want it to be able to search through a lot of different data, then this is a ideal target for things like data analytics, uh, AI and ML. So now let's do a side by side storage comparison. Um, I, I know a lot of folks work visually, so we wanted to build these graphs out just to make it easy for you to understand uh, some of the use cases where these could be used. So for object storage, for any app and optimal for the cloud, you can store any type and amount of data for any duration and retrieve it as often as you like via the REST API. So this is good for binary and object data, uh, blobs, unstructured data, things like that. Remember this gets written down as the data itself and then metadata and object ID and other things are generated and attached to this. And that's what you get back. You get back the data plus this additional data. So you can see that there's the object, there's the ID, metadata attributes and the data itself that's all part of the object in object storage. Some common use cases for this are streaming video, images, data analytics, backups, uh, document uh, storage, file storage, tape replacement, uh, websites, and disaster recovery. Next, we have block storage, which is typically local or local attached. I uh, think SAN or Fiber or iSCSI. Uh, and it's a hard disk drive, SSD or NVMe for physical servers or VM operations. So this is good for block storage of servers, VMs, uh, shared storage, and a range of latency requirements. Latency meaning that if you have hard drives, it's gonna be a bit slower, but if you really need that speed, you could have something like SSDs or NVMe drives using that. Remember, block storage is written to and read as block and then reassembled for you uh, on the output. Some common use cases for this, disk for servers, shared read-only access across systems, and storage for databases. Uh, and if you're looking at SSDs or NVMe, you've got flash optimized databases, uh, scale out analytics, and also media rendering. And then file storage, uh, local NAS uh, cloud storage, uh, is shared to multiple devices via specific protocols like SMB, NFS, and others. Uh, this is good for shared file storage, unstructured data, and written and read as the file itself. 
This is good for traditional file sharing, media storage, light data analytics, uh, backups and local archive documents, and of course, web content management as mentioned earlier. So before I let you go today, I did want to talk about one more slide, and that is uh, what object storage is really capable of as a modern solution. And a lot of the use cases we at MinIO are seeing our customers use object storage where you may have used some of the other uh, either file or block storage for your more traditional storage previously, but now they're migrating these workloads over. So organizations are leveraging object storage for much more traditional workloads uh, because of the elasticity, scalability, scale-out performance, and multi-architecture support, as well as the hybrid multi-cloud capabilities. This is really becoming a singular storage solution for a lot of orgs. Um, so this is good for, as I said before, binary object uh, blobs, uh, unstructured data, uh, but also so many other things like streaming video uh, platforms, backups, images, data analytics, uh, application migrations, regulatory archives, machine learning, file storage, websites, uh, documents, tape replacement, media processing, genomics as a huge data lake. I mean, it's just there's so much power in this platform and it's so approachable for so many organizations to either build this into their applications or leverage it directly from their systems. This is really a powerful tool that I highly recommend. So go check out Object Storage if you haven't. And if you're curious about what the best object storage is, obviously come talk to us at MinIO.